So if you do any holiday shopping, whether it's for Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or whatever other holiday that exists that I'm probably forgetting about during this time of the year, you likely have to get presents for people because it's the spirit of giving. It's like, okay, it's a time of the year where I should think less about myself, more about other people, and I should give more than I should get. And in order to do that, you likely have to stay within a budget and you have to have fast and efficient and effective methods to be able to get those presents in a meaningful way to, to deliver to the people that deserve it, the people that you love, the people that you care about. And there's one major company that benefits from those desires and needs to get people gifts, even though when we translate it, 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 all, it ultimately culminates into, into to the most capitalist form of, of marketing during this time of the year, which is Amazon. Amazon stock and Amazon the company. We have not talked about Amazon on this channel yet, and I'm excited today to talk about it because there was a story that came out really yesterday, December 23rd, that really made me feel excited to talk about Amazon and talk about Amazon stock, and, and I wanted to get more deeper into it. It is the time of the year where people get gifts for other people. It is Christmas Eve today as I'm recording this, and Amazon is one of the companies that benefits the most from these types of gifts. Amazon stock is at around $3,400 now. Uh, before the pandemic, it was about $1,500, so it has more than doubled since that time, and it is thriving as a company. The stock has been relatively flat throughout 2021, primarily because I think analysts were recognizing that after doubling and reaching the trillion dollar mark, it's like it's hard for it to grow, even though there's a lot of growth potential, but the, you know, doubling with in a year, 100% in a year is, or more than 100% is, is uh, something most companies don't do. So the fact that Amazon was able to do it because it was one of the most crucial players when it came to the pandemic and being able to get people what they needed meant that its growth was inevitably going to slow down. Well, they have a new way to get their growth to come up. And this is very interesting because I've been thinking about this for a long time if they were ever going to do this. And it seems like they're finally putting in the frameworks to actually do this, which is compete with Shopify. For people that don't know Shopify, Shopify is one of ARK Innovation's main funds uh, in the flagship ARK K uh, ETF. And Shopify is essentially a platform where people can create their own online store using the software that Shopify gives you. Um, it's essentially this platform where you can sign up, you pay 30 bucks a month and you pay a little bit per each sale and you have unlimited amounts of analytics and software that allows you to build a virtual storefront online. So if you want to sell water bottles and you are very passionate about water bottles or you've created a certain way in which water bottles can be more effective than other water bottles on the market, instead of going through other distribution mechanisms like Amazon that involve a lot of fees, that involve a lot of regulations just in terms of getting your products up there, and I know this because I tried doing this a couple years ago, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. You can just uh, start your own Shopify store, buy a domain name for 14 bucks, and then put your water bottles on that store, and you have a virtual storefront where you can drive traffic to, and people can literally buy your products right then and there. It's a phenomenal software. I've used Shopify before. I've started a couple of my own stores a couple years ago when I was doing some other side hustles, and it's a. It, you could see it as a business that really does scale because almost the entirety of the world, especially if you're an independent shopper, Kylie Cosmetics, which is Kylie Jenner's makeup brand, uses Shopify. A lot of people in the world use Shopify. So we're going to get into this article that just came out from uh, Business Week, but uh, we're just going to look at the insider, uh, Business Insider version of the article. And we're going to talk about what Amazon is trying to do that could compete with Shopify. Okay, so we're here. Amazon is reportedly working on a rival service to Shopify. Shopify CEO said if Amazon's product succeeds, I actually accomplished my mission. That's... That's a nice fluff, but let's see what let's see what actually happens. Shopify aims to give power to retailers by uh, helping them operate independent online shops. And okay, there we go. So Shopify CEO Toby Luke knows Amazon might be coming for his business. He says he thinks of Amazon as a worthy rival, and if they knock it out of the park and make it super easy to start new businesses on it, then I'm like, I actually accomplished my mission. I, I think he's genuine when he's saying this, but it's also important to recognize that he kind of has to say this, right? Because when you're a CEO and you see that there's competition and there's competition coming and you can't really do anything about the competition, you cannot be like, oh, I'm scared, right? You have to be like, no, I welcome it. Like, this is validating our model. This is like proving that what we're doing is good if one of the biggest companies in the world wants to replicate it. So like, you kind of have to be like, bring it on in the most nicest of ways because if you don't say that, they're gonna, they're like a shark, right? They'll smell blood in the water and then they're really gonna come after you. So, 
Uh, Shopify has a $178 billion valuation, obviously a lot lower than Amazon, but they are able to do stuff that's pretty, pretty big for companies like Chipotle, Allbirds, Staples. Uh, Luke has defined Shopify as the anti-Amazon, an e-commerce company that gives power to sellers and simplifies starting an online business. So he said that Amazon is trying to build an empire and Shopify is trying to arm the rebels. And this is the unique differentiating variable here. Amazon is, you go to the website, you search water bottle, and you get a bunch of water bottles. Shopify, you can't really do that. You can't just search water bottle and you get it. You rather get hit with this 14-day free trial because they want you to start your own water bottle company rather than um, searching for water bottles on the platform. But Amazon is working on a similar product. Insiders told Bloomberg, like Shopify, the Amazon will allow retailers to build independent online stores under Amazon's current system. Sellers only hawk their products through the main marketplace through search results. And if Amazon projects bear fruit, Luke told Business Week he's up for being the underdog again. I think he's serious when he says that, but he also has to be because like you can't be scared when this happens. However, this is also a really new thing that I want to analyze. Shopify is also moving in Amazon's direction. The company is quietly testing a new search feature in its shop app that would allow buyers to browse items across many merchants as once. And Shopify told Insider that the function could make Shopify more like Amazon. Okay, so a couple points of analysis and I want to talk about this and how this affects Shopify and Amazon. Number one, when you go to Amazon and you go to, to the website and you type in something, there's a lot of traffic that is generated uh, based upon these search results. And search results ultimately dominate the basis for sellers to make money. So if I go to Amazon and I type in pillow, the top search results that are likely uh, using pay-per-click advertising, which is why Amazon makes a lot of money off ads. I saw another article the other day that Amazon just makes a boatload of money off ads and it's more than it's ever made in its history in 2021. Then those pillows that are advertising advertising to get on the front list of that search result, they're going to be able to get the, ben the, the benefit of ultimately uh, converting the sale, right? Because the first thing that pops up, consumers are lazy. They don't want to go through a lot of pages. You ultimately buy that pillow. Shopify is different. There is no natural storefront where you type in something and you get a result. The difference between Shopify and Amazon is that Shopify is trying to make rebels, i.e. people who are just regular people, try to have the ability to start their own online business. It's much more entrepreneurially uh, uh, sort of sort of framed for individual people. Whereas Amazon is an empire, right? When you go to Amazon and you type in something, Amazon and its algorithms have to find the best thing that they can show you. And when they show you that thing, th they're hoping that you buy it and they're hoping that their algorithm is good enough to make you buy something else. Within the ecosystem of Amazon, there are other sellers. So Amazon has this uh, brand called Amazon Basics, where they literally make everything in the world in China for like half the price it should cost. Uh, and most people buy things off that iPhone chargers, you know, airport suitca uh, suitcases, right? Like anything you can imagine. But they also support third party sellers and third party sellers make up the bulk of what Amazon sells on its on its on its website. But they don't allow third party sellers to have a storefront. And the reason for this is because because of Amazon's scale and, it, and its and its depth, search results ultimately power the ability to get discovered. There's actually something called a buy box on Amazon. And this is if you if you've ever done FBA, uh, which is their service for selling things on Amazon. I did it in 2018. It's very interesting. If you have six people selling the same product, there is something called a buy box where uh, that buy box is rotated between these six sellers. So if there is 50, uh, 500 products of this water bottle, again, that are sold per month, and you have six people selling the same water bottle, you would do 500 divided by six, and each one of those sellers should, as long as they keep their price the same, rotate the number of sales that they're getting on that water bottle. So the buy box is essentially this, uh, this equalizing mechanism to make sure that people don't raise their prices, right? Because if you raise your price from like nine bucks to 10 bucks, then people are just not going to buy your version of the water bottle, even though it's the exact same thing, because if people would, you know, buy a lower price. So if you keep your prices the same, the buy box will rotate equally as per their algorithm, and then you'll be able to get a certain portion of those sales. That's kind of like how Amazon works. And they have a lot of other different variables and technical things that allow people to get their products discovered. Obviously, if you advertise, it gets it discovered even more. Shopify doesn't have that. Shopify is testing that, which is super interesting because it's kind of going against the ethos of this whole, we are a platform for people, because then when the platform starts competing with the people, which make no mistake, that is exactly what Amazon does. It is competing with its sellers. They even had antitrust, you know, hearings about this because there were so many reports that like they would match their other people's uh, other sellers prices or undercut them. And like, obviously, you know, average sellers can't afford to Amazon's undercut prices. Right. So that's bad for Amazon for, for those sellers then uh, Amazon's going to get those sales. Amazon's going to make money. They're going to see what trends are working and they're going to capitalize on them. If Shopify starts to do that, I see that as bad for the brand. Do I see that as bad for the company? No, because if people go on Shopify and they type in something and they get a result and that result is from a third-party seller, 
then that third party seller has more leverage because now there's search results being done in a universal platform that is getting a lot of traffic per day in which they can get their product sold. So the person doesn't have to really do that much work to get the traffic anymore if they're ranking for those search results because Shopify is doing the traffic for you. The question then becomes, are uh, people going to be more willing to go to just third party platforms in general or third party websites powered by Shopify versus search on Shopify? That's the existential question. I think that question is going to determine the business model for how Shopify goes forward. I think that's a positive catalyst for the stock, however, because a universal place where people go to find anything, a search engine, is always valuable. It just has to be executed correctly. Now, the reason I think Amazon stock could go parabolic is because if Amazon were able to create what Shopify has created for independent sellers, the storefront, the technology, the software, all that has to be good. And I think Amazon could do that. But if Amazon could add the added benefit of some differentiating variable via the Amazon platform. I don't know if that's search. I don't know if that's more ways for people to find you. I don't know what exactly that is. Then I think this could be better than Shopify. And the reason this could be better than Shopify is because again, Shopify sellers have to drive traffic. They primarily use Facebook ads and TikTok ads, whatever, to get people to find their store. But once they come to the store, it's just a seamless process, right? And that's why Shopify works so well. With Amazon, you know, if they could incorporate Prime in some way, but that wouldn't really make sense because then you're just selling on Amazon. But if there was some way they could do it where I could set up my own store independent of Amazon. So it's not, you know, jakeswaterbottles.amazon.com. It's jakeswaterbottles.com. But Amazon is undergirding it. And there are methods by which you can incorporate some of the key Amazon features like Prime or like search results or, you know, like all the reviews and ratings or all that stuff in like a unique way then maybe there's a way this can make sense. The question simply becomes what take does Amazon what take rate does Amazon have, right? Shopify has like a 2.9% take rate. They they charge 30 bucks a month. Very successful SaaS offering. SaaS offerings are very lucrative in 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 Silicon Valley and in just in, in business in general because if you've got people paying $30 a month consistently, that's a lot of money coming in. The question becomes is Amazon going to do that? Now, Amazon already has a seller fee on its platform because when I did Amazon, it was about 40 bucks a month just to list your products. Then they take a 7% traffic fee, then they take a 7% delivery fee if you're doing FBA through like <laughs> they take a lot of fees like by the end of the day you're left with like a couple of dollars of profit hopefully on a product and you know maybe you're breaking even and you're just getting some more sales and hopefully the algorithm is liking you a little bit more so the question becomes what is their take rate like that's the weird thing about this is they already offer selling through their platform if they are able to offer selling through a software they create for independent sellers but add elements of their platform in it that's what I think could make the stock go really well. Because then you're opening up a new market, right? You think Amazon can't keep growing. They have AWS, they have Prime, they have the Kindle. They have all these different features. The question becomes, how do they expand to even, even more and more people? And what Shopify has done, it's gotten a lot of people across the world to simply use the platform and pay a service fee to start their own thing. Amazon has said, put your stuff on our platform and we'll figure it out. If Amazon were to ex outsource the platform to the individual creators and say, hey, you guys have to do your own thing with this software, but there's an added benefit from Amazon, the question becomes how many people are going to adapt that? And I think there's a lot of sellers that hate selling on Amazon because of all the regulations and fees of Amazon. And if Amazon just said, hey, here's the software, you can make your own thing with our platform, but there are some elements of Amazon, hopefully traffic that they can incorporate within your platform, because I think that's the biggest thing then that could be actually really strong for the stock. Does that beat Shopify? Uh, I don't know. I think there's two elements to if it will beat Shopify, and these are sort of my final things to say on this. Number one, it has to be a lot better of an experience from a software perspective. And I don't know if that's going to happen because Shopify is exclusively focused on making their software the best software in the world. So Amazon would have to really make sure that their software has uh, the components and the mechanisms by which people feel that it's easy to use. It's, it's There's not a lot of coding involved. It's just plug and play, click a couple buttons and boom, I'm up and running. So that would be the first thing. Number two is their marketing. So Amazon, again, has a couple billion people Per, per per month visit their website, probably per week, right? So if that's the case, all you to advertise is very simple, right? You just put it on your website. Hey, start your own Amazon store. You're gonna immediately get clicks, immediately get people starting up on these free trials. Whereas Shopify is a little bit harder, right? Shopify has to do ambassador programs and advertising and all the stuff. Amazon already has all the traffic. So I think they will get the initial people to join the product. Then if the software is meaningful, they'll use the product. And then if they can add some differentiating variable that Shopify can't add, which I think are Amazon features like Prime or traffic or even just lower the cost from 29 bucks that you have to pay to Shopify to 25 there's a lot of different ways that Amazon can incorporate its uh, already empire-like features within independent stores and quote-unquote arm the rebels in a way 
that Shopify simply can't. Those are my thoughts on Amazon and Shopify. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think Amazon can actually compete with Shopify? And do you think Shopify could become a universal search engine for products that can compete with Amazon? And do you own any of Amazon and Shopify stock? Let me know your guys' thoughts. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.